Video projectors have large circular aperture stops to maximize the amount of projected light. Unfortunately, this yields a narrow depth of field, which is problematic when images are projected onto non-planar surfaces. Projected imagery can be regionally defocused if the depth of field is too small. Using smaller apertures to increase the depth of field, however, decreases the light throughput. Several approaches have been proposed to increase projected depth of field by convolving projected images with the inverse blur function. A deconvolution can be performed in the frequency domain, and it is equivalent to a division of the Fourier transformed image and blur function. The blur function corresponds to a filter kernel whose scale is proportional to the amount of defocus. The different blur levels require multiple deconvolution steps at different kernel scales. The Gaussian point spread function of common circular apertures, however, sets clear limitations for deconvolution. Divisions by very low Fourier magnitudes amplify certain frequencies too much and yield ringing in the deconvolved spatial images. Here the Fourier magnitudes that are too low are clipped. Applying only small kernel scales will reduce the number of low Fourier magnitudes and consequently the ringing artifacts, but will also lead to only minor focus improvements. To overcome this problem, we apply a coded mask at the aperture plane of the objective lens that produces only few low Fourier magnitudes. It is more broadband in the frequency domain. Consequently, more frequencies are retained and more image details can be reconstructed after deconvolution. For estimating the different blur levels that are necessary to derive the corresponding kernel scales, we apply structured light projection. The measured blur levels are normalized to a discrete number of kernel scales. One limitation of static coded apertures is that they reduce the light throughput by a constant factor which is independent of the actual image content. Adapting the aperture dynamically with respect to spatial frequencies and luminance of the input would allow light throughput and deconvolution quality to be optimized for each projected frame. To support this, we apply a transparent liquid crystal array instead of a static broadband mask. The modulation pattern is determined by the perceivable frequencies and luminance of the displayed images. In order to avoid noticeable intensity variations in the form of flickering during subsequent frames with a similar average luminance, we employ a model for temporal luminance adaption of the human visual system. In order to compute our dynamic apertures, we wish to filter out all frequencies that do not contribute to perceivable image fidelity. To do this, the original image is converted to absolute luminance values and a binary frequency importance mask is computed by thresholding the image frequencies according to a model of the human visual system. The difference between original and filtered image is not perceivable under the given viewing conditions. Our dynamic apertures support all important frequencies in the input image with a minimal variance of the Fourier transform. In addition, they also maximize light throughput. We compute them using an optimization approach that is described in detail in the paper and summarized here. M is a matrix containing a binary frequency important mask on its diagonal. B is a matrix containing the orthogonal Fourier basis function in its columns. These represent the optical transfer function of the individual aperture pixels. B asterisk is the pseudo inverse of B, which can easily be pre computed. Multiplying B asterisk and M results in the optimal intensity code of the aperture pattern. In order to account for multiple scales, we compute the aperture initially only for largest measured defocus. The Fourier transform of this supports all important frequencies, so will all of its smaller spatial scales. Therefore, we can resample the result to smaller scales in the spatial domain using integral sampling. Due to contrast limitations of available liquid crystal arrays, we are currently limited to binary mask patterns and have to adjust our intensity codes. The aperture is scaled for appropriate inverse filtering at measured blur levels and for supporting temporal luminance adaption as well as contrast enhancements when rendering them on the liquid crystal array. This process is repeated for every frame. These examples show that the frequency distribution of the computed apertures must differ from the 1 over f frequency distribution of natural images to achieve optimal results. Adaptive coded apertures outperform previous methods of defocus compensation for objective lenses with static circular aperture stops or broadband masks. To reach the same depth of field that is achieved with the adaptive coded aperture for this example with an equivalent circular aperture, an f-stop of 7.7 is needed. In terms of light throughput, 
the gain is theoretically a factor of 6. But due to the limited contrast of the liquid crystal array, it is approximately a factor of 2.5. In order to achieve the same light throughput, however, an f-stop 3.7 would be required. An additional application of coded apertures is projector depixelization, where the discretized pixel structure optically vanishes through defocus while image details are recovered through inverse filtering. This not only improves the image quality of closed-view projection-based displays such as rear-projected TV sets, but also of devices that utilize projection-based illumination techniques. High dynamic range displays that apply spatially modulated projection backlight suffer from visible moiré patterns if the projection is focused on the screen plane. This can be avoided by defocusing the projection. High quality depixelization of the backlight would increase the contrast frequency and would lead to improved results for these displays as well. Scaling the apertures additionally based on the average luminance of the input images increases temporal contrast as it is the case for auto iris projector lenses. These examples show color-coded local luminance of images projected in our coded auto iris mode. The aperture scale is adapted to the brightness of every individual frame. Adaptive coded apertures optimize depth of field versus light throughput based on visual perception limitations and can potentially lead to a new generation of auto iris projector lenses.